In this episode, I'd like to show you something that's kind of really cool. I have, again, the bullet character. This is Proxima Nova. Available to all Final Cut users and Motion users. You'll notice here that I've got the front edge size and the back edge size already set up. I've got the front edge set to round and the back edge to bevel just for something different. And it's important that this be something different than same as front. If you're going to use round on both ends, you've got to set the back edge to round. And you can just leave them at the defaults 4 and 4. If I were to change this parameter, the depth, you'll notice that it floors out at 0. And the width also floors out at 0. So I'll just go ahead and reset those to the defaults. Now uh, I'm going to show you how to get into the negative ranges for the width and the depth. And the way to do that is to go into your behaviors, text animation, sequence text, and then add front edge size and add back edge size. Now just for information, I'll show you what extrusion depth looks like. If I turn this sideways and extrude this shape out, this works just like it does in the main panel. But it, I can go negative with this, but you'll notice that when I do go negative, you lose the sides. There are no sides. So the practicality of this is absent. So I'll go ahead and remove the extrusion. I'm not going to be using it here. However, we'll start with the front edge size and I'll dial out a depth. You notice again the blue arrow is pointing forward this way so I'll turn this around so we can see the front edge come up this way. And I can dial up the width here and it's just like in the main panel but the other thing I can do is I can go into the negative region and I can create a bell like that so I can manipulate these edges in an opposite direction and if I were to go to the negative depth you'll see that it goes out the other way That's pretty cool. Alright, do the same thing with the back edge. Let's say a negative width here. You'll remember this is beveled. And I'll do a positive depth. Okay. Let's check this out. Uh, let's go to text. Let's extrude this out. If I change the back edge to concave, and if we go with something like gold, instant chalice. Okay, we'll have to go to multiple material to get rid of. Um, this is the back edge side, so we'll just go to back and we'll make that substance generic and we'll take out the opacity. Pretty nice. Let's play this. Now when you're messing around with a uh, sequence text behavior, you'll notice that the default behavior is to collapse back to your original shape if you've got it set from from. If I go to 2, it'll go from your basic starting point and grow into the shape you've designed. <laughs> also very cool, but often not exactly what you want to do. 
in order to get around having this change over time we'll go to the speed parameter and change that to custom we'll go from from here and it should stay throughout the life of the character okay however there's some weirdness that goes on in motion that if you make changes to this sometimes this custom speed is going to auto keyframe itself from 0 to 100 so occasionally you'll have to come back here and reset this parameter to 0 or simply go ahead and set a keyframe at 0 and don't add any more changes to the custom speed You can do a little bit more about uh, filling in the bottom there. Text, appearance. We've cleared the back out. Just go ahead and uh, what do we do if we clear the front out? You can plug that hole with uh, a copy of the original character. Let's duplicate it and turn it off. Turn these back on real quick. And there. The hole is plugged. Hope you found this useful, and I'll catch you on the next one.